Art and creativity is great because it can inspire others to brandish their freak flags and lead art into a new direction. It brings out human traits that we all share and that make us individuals. For my art history class, I chose to interview a family friend and professional artist from my hometown in Rhode Island. His name is John Katula, and he lives an active life being an artist and doing good things for his community and others, as well as having traveled with the Peace Corps. The first question I asked John is, what do you see as the role of the visual arts in our mass-mediated world, and particularly in your profession? John replied, my profession is artist, arts educator, and arts promoter. The visual artist musters all his creativity and skill to produce a work that says, here is something I want you to look at. I have made this to share with you because I think it is worth you taking the time to look at. With new communications and media technologies, imagery is almost instantly available. Do you believe that this is having a positive or negative influence on the industry? Provide an example. He says, it is hard for me to imagine this is anything but good. What visual artist would not want a more visually saturated world? Lately, I've been doing a lot of drawing on my iPad. Typically, I will sample an image from the internet, load it up in Sketchbook Pro, layer it with other imagery, some of which is handmade, some of which is digital, and share it through Facebook and my blogs. This is like keeping a virtual sketchbook and showing it to a couple of hundred people as I go along. I get some feedback through thumbs up and comments, and I'm working on ways to expand the dialogue. All of this imagery is available to me for further development and presentation in more traditional venues such as galleries. What a great process for an artist to have at his fingertips. What popular images do you see that are frequently rechanneled throughout the entertainment industry? John says, I was once giving a talk on Cuban art and showed a famous photograph of Che Guevara. A man I know who was in the audience called out, hey, that is the guy from the t-shirts. This man, who is a gifted artist, only seemed to know Che as a recycled pop art image on a t-shirt. There are, of course, many other examples. Shepard Fairey's Obama, Hope Poster, and all the versions of his Obey work, Banksy's art, Keith Haring's imagery, etc. The grandfather of rechanneled, rechanneled imagery is Andy Warhol. In terms of content and style, we would be living in a completely different visual world if he had never silk screened that Campbell's soup can. Question 4. Are there particular images this industry has popularized and or created? John replied, In addition to the examples given above, I'd add the people who work in a comic book slash graphic novel format. R. Crumb is brilliant and ubiquitous. Movies would not be the same if directors and art directors had not read comic books when they were kids. I think you can make the case that Bob Kane is right up there with Andy Warhol in terms of his influence on the visual world we live in. Who is one of your favorite visual artists, and or what is your favorite style of visual art? John says, of course, it is hard to narrow it down to just one. Since you are forcing me, I will say Gregory Gillespie. Gillespie, who died in 2000, was a prolific painter who produced a large body of work in a variety of styles. He is best known for his realist, photorealistic paintings, especially his self-portraits. If you walk into a gallery in a museum where one of his paintings is on display, I guarantee you will walk straight up to it before you look at anything else in the room. This is true because his paintings are beautiful physical objects created with amazing technical skill, but also they are psychologically loaded and are always telling you much more than just what is on the surface. Sometimes his style is referred to as magical realism. That phrase, although there is not a complete agreement on what it means, is a pretty good description of the style of art I am most attracted to. How has your knowledge of famous artworks influenced your creative process? John replied, Because of my age, I'm 67 in training, I think I have more familiarity with art history than a lot of younger artists. As a result, one thing I think I know is that there is nothing new. Somebody has done it before and probably done it better. I spend a lot of time trying to get my students to look at the antecedents of their work because I think knowing who has traveled the same road, what they encountered along the way, and where they ended up makes for a richer journey. For my final question, I asked John what one of his favorite pieces of work that he made was and why. He responded, I've attached three examples of the iPad drawings I talk about in question two. I like them because I think they're funny and they might get people to look at something that is familiar to them in a new way. I also like that they only exist digitally so they won't clutter up my studio and when I die they will be easy to get rid of. <laughs>